Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a concept called Network Address Translation or in short, NAT. So basically, this concept is used to convert private IP addresses into public IP addresses and vice versa. Guys, as you can remember, in the previous class that we had, the very very first classes, we said that a private IP addresses are those kind of IP addresses that you can use to communicate within your LAN, but you cannot communicate over the internet. Okay, and now you will need a public IP address to communicate over the internet. Okay, for example, in this diagram here, as you can see, that we have three hosts, and we have a switch router and let's say this is a cloud to access some resources okay so this computer here let's say host a wants to access a server here server b okay over the internet so it's this router here that will translate host a private ip address into a public ip address and enable it to access this server okay all right so to access the internet one public ip address is needed but we can use a private ip address in our private network we can use a private ip address to communicate within the lan as you can see here okay these host computers will have a private ip address assigned to them either statically or dynamically okay and that is called private ip address through which we, through which they can communicate within this lan okay okay so the idea of NAT is to allow multiple devices to access the internet through a single public ip address okay okay so in other terms NAT is a process in which one or more local ip address is translated into one or more global ip address and vice and vice versa in order to provide internet access to the local host as we have just said you know the router here NAT process will be done by a router so the router here will translate any private ip address into a public address and vice versa okay also it does the translation of port numbers for example it masks the port number of the host with another port number in the packet that will be routed to the destination okay it then makes the corresponding entries of the IP address and port numbers in a NAT table okay for example this is a NAT mapping table as you can see a public IP addresses have been mapped to private IP address such that this private IP address will use this public IP address to access the internet okay for the same cases of this one and this one okay all right so guys there's a scenario here using this diagram let's consider we have post hey here wants to access server one over the internet okay so the router here will translate the private IP address into a public IP address to allow us here to access server 1 over the internet. Okay? Then it will translate again this public IP address into a private IP address. Okay? Oste requests a web page from an internet server, this one. Okay? Because host a uses a private ip addressing the source address of the request has to be changed by the router because private ip addresses are not routable on the internet you know private ip addresses cannot be routable over the internet okay it's only a public ip address that is routable over the internet okay private ip address you can only use it to communicate within your LAN, but not over the internet okay know the difference so public ip address will cost money okay because they will be provided by isp 
So router one receives the request, okay, from host A here. Then it will change the source IP address into a public address and sends the packet to server one. Server one, upon receiving the request, it will process the request and give a reply. Okay. So server one receives the packet and replies to the router one. And router one receives the packet, changes the destination IP address to a private IP address of host B and sends the packet to host B. That's very simple. So let's see what we have next. Types of NATs. We have static NAT, dynamic NAT, and PAT, port address translation. Let's start with the static NAT. In static NAT, a single unregistered or private IP address is mapped with legally registered or public IP address. Okay? It's one-to-one. One-to-one -to -one. One -to -one mapping. One private IP address is mapped to one public IP address okay. okay so it's one to one mapping between the local and global addresses and it's generally used for web hosting okay static NAT one to one mapping between the local and global addresses so suppose we have 1000 devices in our local network do you want these devices to access the internet then we will need public IP addresses. And how many public IP addresses will we require? You know, it's one to one mapping. So it's 1000. You know, 1000 devices in our local network will require 1000 public IP addresses to access the internet. And you know, guys, we said that public IP addresses are purchased. Okay? They cost money. You know, one-to-one -one mapping basically is very costly because even if you have 5,000 devices in your network, you will need 5,000 public IP before addresses. And that's very, very costly, okay? Very simple. One-to-one -one mapping. You have 10,000 devices, you will need 10,000 public IP before addresses, okay? For these devices to access the internet. All right, so dynamic NAT. In this type of NAT, an unregistered IP address, which is a private IP address, is translated into registered IP address, which is public IP address, from a pool of a public IP addresses. If the IP address of the pool is not free, you know, let's say those 100 I public IP before addresses have been taken. Then the packet will be dropped as only a fixed number of private IPv4 addresses can be translated to public addresses. Okay? A pool, you know. A private IP addresses are translated from a pool of public IP addresses. So, for example, suppose there is a pool of two public IP addresses. Then only two private IP addresses can be translated at a given time. And if the third private IP address wants to access the internet, then the packet will be dropped. Therefore, many private IP addresses are mapped to a pool of public IP addresses. Okay? And therefore, this NAT is used when the number of users who want to access the internet is fixed this is also very costly as the organization has to buy many global IP addresses to make a pool okay I hope you understand that guys so finally port address translation this is also called NAT overload so in NAT overload many private IP addresses can be translated into a single public IP address. Even if you have 1000 devices, you know, to access the internet, 
they will use only one public IP address okay so this concept will use port numbers to distinguish traffic okay for example which traffic belongs to which IP address okay the concept of port numbers you know all the devices all the I private IP addresses will access the internet through the use of one public IP address and to distinguish the traffic this concept uses port numbers okay and ends is the most effective because you only because you only have to purchase one public IP address okay and out of these three out of the three you know part is the most cost effective type of NAT okay so let's see what you have next NAT inside and outside addresses so when you say inside address it refers to the address which must be translated the inside address and outside refers to that address which are not in control of an organization okay so there are network addresses in which the translation of the address will be done okay so both the inside and outside addresses are the network addresses in which the translation of the addresses will be done okay all right so let's see them inside local address this is an IP address that is assigned to a host on the inside network. Okay? Inside network. The local network. Okay? The address is probably not an IP address assigned by the service provider. Okay? For example, these are private IP addresses. This is the inside host seen from the inside network. Okay? For example, in the diagram below, as you can see, inside local so this address is called inside local address okay inside global address this is an IP address that represent one or more local IP address to the outside world this is the inside host as seen from the outside world okay as here as you can see it's here okay and uh, number three outside local address this is the actual IP address of the destination host in the local network after translation very simple outside local address that kind of IP address of the destination host in the local network after translation okay outside local address this one okay very simple and finally outside global address this is the outside host i seen from the outside network it's the ip address of the outside destination host before translation outside global okay all right guys so let's see what we have next advantages and disadvantages of NAT number one advantages NAT conserves legally registered IP addresses legally registered are public IP addresses and it provides privacy as the device IP address sending and receiving the traffic will be hidden okay it eliminates the renumbering when a network evolves very simple and finally on this disadvantages translation re result in switching path delays okay because you know that the router need to translate the addresses first before it can forward the traffic okay certain application will not function while not is enabled okay it complicates tunneling protocols such as IP, sec IP security okay also the router being a network layer device should not tamper with port numbers but it has to do because of not 
and guys basically that will mark the end of today's class let's see you again in the next class in which we will learn how to configure each of the category static NAT, dynamic NAT, and port address and port address translation okay so guys before you can log out kindly suppose i'm not subscribed support our channel hit on the subscribe button like our video and drop a comment below bye and see you again in the practical part